bring you the latest news of Bedlam News sees nothing, shows all. Spring is here, and the Bedlam News cameraman heralds arrive with vernal season around the world. New York City, first robin arrives at Central Park. I say, Hunter, is there the robin? Too cold for a robin, lady. It must be a sparrow with a red vest on. Kokomo, Nebraska. City opens municipal cedar closet to store taxpayers heading underway. Mayor Fling presides a dedication. Hey, thank you. As your mayor, it gives me great pleasure to throw in the first mothball. Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Seltzer and Molasses appears in Great American Home. Take it home and it's good for you. Oh, gee, my, I don't want any. Seattle, Washington, salmon season opens in Columbia River. Fish, fresh fish. Washington, D.C., prominent actor is allowed entertainment expenses on his income tax deductions. Interested citizens express opinions on this phenomenal ruling. Congressman Bellum. My friends, it's not up to the actors to feed the credits. Congress should pass a bill forcing all critics to eat their words. George Lean Hayton, well-known critic, speaks his mind. It's a lot of hot and pepper. I've never gotten any food from an actor. When a ham invites me to dinner, I always bring my own lunch. Roger Bozo Davis, burlesque comedian, has his say. Oh, I've been getting rotten notices all my life. My last East Cincinnati, I took a critic into a chili joint, but we both beat it out without taking a check. Atlantic City, New Jersey, Pumphrey Quake, first bather of new season, plunges into surf. Oh, you'll catch your death of cold, Pumphrey. No, I've got to go in, men. Them newsreel guys are waiting. Okay, Quake, camera's ready. Want to try a duck? Well, here I go, boy. You come out of there this instant, Pumphrey Quake. <laughs> Will you say a few words for the bedlam news, Mr. Quake? I'm 42, happily married and soaking wet. My favorite song is Am I Blue? And now for some songs from Bonnie Scotland, brought to you by our singing troubadour, Theodore Webb, and our salafaticer singers. <laughs> a piano specialty played by the one and only Lenny Hayton, leader of the Ipana Troubadour. Now we rejoin Fred Allen in his Bedlam Detective Agency. Listen closely, for Detective Allen is sure to catch the crook of the mic. Bedlam Detective Agency? Oh, yes, Inspector Allen is here. Hold it on. Hello. Oh, yes, Mr. Vandergilt. You've had another letter asking for money? That same gang, eh? They've been bleeding you for six months? Oh, you must be good and anemic by now. Listen, you better send them the money. I'll explain it later. Okay. Is Mr. Vandergill the blackmail victim? No, the organized gang that's been writing him for money is the income tax department. You'll probably be next. Here's your mail. Thanks. Any news from you, so? No, sir. Take a letter. Dear Sam, life is a dollar dinner, period. After you finish with turkey, you get your desserts. We'll, we will all be glad to see your ship come in. Love and high ho. Well, where can Mr. Insult be reached? Try Snug Harbor, if you will. Crime is a terrible thing, isn't it? Crime's all right. It's the people running it that make it what it is. Have you done anything about Dillinger? Have I? Listen, I'm leaving jackknives and pieces of wood on every street corner in the country. For what? The minute Dillinger comes out to whittle, I've got him. <laughs> There's a suspicious-looking man to see you. Don't be silly. That's my reflection in the mirror. I know, but there's a tougher-looking guy outside. Well, send him in. I'll grill him before he can open his mouth. 
Good morning. Who are you? What's your name? Who are you and what's your name? How old are you? How old are you? Where were you on the night of April 11th, 1933? I was just going to ask you that. Now, wait a minute. We're not getting any play. Well, who's grilling who? Are you guilty or not guilty? Keep your shirt on, loudmouth. I'm no criminal. Oh, no. I guess I know a con man when I see one. Excuse me. Perhaps I can settle this. Yeah, see what he wants while I think up a whooping third degree. Have you any business here? Yes, I came to take the census, but I guess somebody beat me to it. Good day. That was a fine piece of work. Well, anyone's apt to make a mistake. That's why they keep on printing marriage license blanks. Excuse me. Which one of you is Detective Allen? I'm Inspector Allen. My breath was annoyer. Well, let's get down to business. My dear fellow, is your business so low that we have to stoop to go into conference? No, 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 no. I'm Colonel Farnham. You've heard of Farnham and Haley's Circus? Oh, yes. How about some passes? Not me. No passes with stream women. My wife's a knife thrower. Well, well, Miss Clues is a bit forward. Why, the idea? No harm, baby. I'll slip you a couple of ducats later on. You or I deduce you've had some trouble at the circus, Mr. Farnham. Trouble? Why, someone stole my lion, Barnaby. He's a man eater. Yes, I read that in the paper this morning. You think you can solve this case? Solve it? The case is solved, Mr. Farnham. What? Will you open the door, Miss Clues? Yes, sir. I... Come in, Gunner, and bring the lion. Okay, Inspector. Come on, puss. <laughs> Wonderful. That's my lion, all right. Come here, Barnaby. I got your message, Inspector. Okay, gonna meet Mr. Farnham. Punch the gristle, Mr. Farnham. <laughs> Ow! Oh, ouch! My hand! Here's a splint. I give him with every handshake. Gunner's the toughest guy in town. <laughs> Sit down, pansy. How, uh, how did you come to take Mr. Farnham's pet, Gunner? Well, I'll tell you, Inspector. We live in a pretty tough neighborhood. And the missus don't feel safe in the house with nothing but a machine gun. Well, don't my cat. Quiet, Mug. The missus... You see, the missus have been wanting a watchdog. So when I went to the psychist and seen this Pekingese... Pekingese? Like, Why, he's ferocious. Yeah, where I come from, the mice chase the horses off the block. Oh, excuse me. Well, Gunner, I think we'll have to return the Nubian plaything to Mr. Farn. Okay, I was going to bring him back anyway. Did your conscience smite you? Nah, the neighborhood's too tough. I had to muzzle me kids to keep them from teething on your lion's tail. Fine, fine, Gunner. Mr. Farnham will give you the reward. Uh, yes, sir. Here's fifty dollars. Oh, thanks. Now I can get the old lady a leopard to match the linoleum. <laughs> well, good day, gentlemen. Come on, Barnaby. So long, Mr. Farnham. Aren't you going along, Gunner? Not yet. You and me's got a little business, Inspector. Stick him up. Watch that gun. Say, what's the big idea? I gotta have ten bucks. Mr. Farnham just gave you fifty, didn't he? I know, but I seen in this morning's paper that the per capita wealth of the country is sixty bucks per man. Well, what's that got to do with me? You're gonna give me ten bucks to make up my quota. <laughs> Little fishes have nothing to do with this case, Pinkbaum. The city of New York has lost its official herring. This city is noted for its herring and the Empire State Building. Thousands of herring lovers this summer will be disappointed. But I'm not a fish snapper. I got the witness outside. Bring in the witness, Miss Clues. Yes, sir. Hello. Oh, hello, Portland. You know Pinkbaum here? Speaking of Portland, though, kiddo. Oh, yes, Mr. Pink Tom runs Flanagan's Delicatessen. Flanagan's? That's a funny name for a delicatessen, isn't it? Yes, everybody goes in there to start a fight, but they generally buy something on the way out. <laughs> you see, it's an Irish neighborhood, so I'm calling it Flanagan's for protection. Quiet, quiet, Pink Baum. Tell us what happened, Portland. Well, Mama had a bitch party this afternoon. Yes? Oh, it was funny. Mama forgot to buy prizes, so the girls were all playing. 
paying for our furniture. Did they win? I'll say the Bridge Club went home with four of the best chairs and our sofa. Fancy that. <laughs> Wasn't Mama worried? No, the winners are really the losers. They'll have to keep up the installment. Could I explain the case, Sergeant? Let's hear the truth first, Pink Baum. Go ahead, Portland. Well, it was late, and Mama knew that Papa would be home after a hard day at Radio City. Is he scratching out a mural down there? <laughs> no, he doesn't exactly work there. Papa watches the men digging excavations. Say, speaking of excavations, Captain, could I get out of this hole I'm in here? I got customers, baby. Don't worry, I'll fix everything, Mr. Pinkball. Yes, Portland, carry on. Well, Mama said run down to Flanagan's delicatessen and get a herring for Papa's dinner. Knowing that fish is brain food, huh? Oh, to some people, yes. But to Papa, it's just an entree. Listen, Portland, stop peeping around the onions. Get down to the herring, will you? Yes, Portland. You know, a herring won't keep off the ice, you know. You're telling me Mama mislaid a herring last year, and we had to move. So much for gossip. I could explain the whole thing, my buddy. That'll be fine. Can I go, please? Papa's waiting for dinner. All right, you can go, but you better forget about the herring. I'll intimate. I'll get Papa some swordfish. That'll be fun. Fun? Yes, when Papa eats swordfish with his knife, it always looks like a duel. I get it. Goodbye, Portland. peek a -boo. Well, uh, everything is bottoms up, boss. Look, uh, I guess I'll button along. Wait a minute, Pink Baum. Did you intend to return this herring? Well, certainly, my pal. When I took the herring, I even left the sardine for a deposit. What made you think you could get away with the city's official herring? <laughs> well, I'll tell you, see. I thought if it was missing, they would blame it on Tammany Hall. <laughs> For 25 minutes now. The studio audience must be asleep by this time. Ah, no, they don't even know the difference. Why, here we are right in here. Shh, why not? So why not try a can of Axel Rod's Axel Grease, ladies and gentlemen? The Axel Grease with a personality. There's nothing finer for slicking your hair. Try some on your pancakes tomorrow morning. We better have some Axel Rod's 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 Listen, Chief, I want to question everyone connected with this program. I thought you would. I locked them all in this handy room over here. Quiet, everybody. I'll soon get to the bottom of this. Now, I have a suggestion to make. Who are you? Why, I'm Mr. Axelrod, the sponsor of this radio program. Oh, and... yes, the sponsor. Mr. Axelrod, you didn't steal that orchestra leader's baton, did you? Why, the idea. How dare tut, you? Tut, I, tut, I... I know you sponsors. Why should I steal it? So that your announcer could talk about your axle grease for the whole hour. Why, that's not true. I had nothing to do with it. All right. Now, who was on the air just before this happened? My two comedians, Hum and Bum. Oh, they all can bounce you. <laughs> Here we are. What the we are. Oh, you're the comedians, Hum and Bum, eh? Hey? The Hum is the purpose, I think. I suppose you've got your alibis ready. Yeah. <laughs> My mother used to sing me to sleep with an alibi. <laughs> oh, that's terrific. Quiet, <laughs> Axel Rod. Now, what happened after nobody laughed with the sponsor? Well, well, the, 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 the orchestra leader give us a call. A call? What is this, a string band? 
Now, which one of you guys in the rent of tuxedos is the orchestra leader? I am. I have never been so humiliated. My ivory baton presented to me personally by Tsar Nikolai Nikolai. Never Nikolai. mind that. Never mind that. Waiting for a Tsar. I've heard that before. What happened? What happened when these alleged comedians finished? <laughs> I was laughing fit to burst. <laughs> then I was putting down my baton and listening intently to the talk about the actor trick. Very instructive. Hunt my cue for the next musical number and poof, my baton, it is missed. And so, so the orchestra couldn't start playing. Precisely. Without my baton, believe them, they can do nothing. And what was the next musical number supposed to be? Well, I was going to sing. To sing what? The Axel Grease theme song. Axel Grease, how does it go? Wagon wheels, wagon wheels. Axel Rod's grease on your wagon wheels. That's all I wanted to know. Gentlemen, the mystery is solved. Good kick, good song, my baton. I'll catch the thief in just a minute if you follow my instructions. Tell me what you say. And where's your trumpet player? Well, I play the trumpet. What do you want, boss? Can you read music? Oh, I'm playing with my ears. Can you, uh, can you remember the first four bars of Wagon Wheels? Bars, you mean? I mean bars. You know, notes, notes. And notes to you, wise guy. Quiet. Quiet. Now, when I give you the signal, start playing Wagon Wheels. Oh, sure, I'm... And shall I sing? No, no, one crime at a time, miss. Now, come on, everybody. Back to the studio. Quiet now. The announcer's still talking. And Axel Rock's Axel Grease is good for animals, too. Are your dogs tired? Well, mine are. <laughs> My Axel Rock's Axel Grease. Ready, Bruce. ready, Cornet? It's sure the best. Okay. Now. No! No! No, no! Stop it! Stop it! No! Uh, no! I thought so. It was the announcer. Yes. Yes, I did it. I confess it. Quiet, quiet, everybody. Come clean, Mr. Announcer. You admit you stole that baton, eh? Yes. I've been the announcer on 22 programs since yesterday, and they all play wagon wheels. Wagon wheels! Wagon wheels! If I hear that song again, I'll go mad! <laughs> yes, yes, I took the leader's baton. Try and find and give me back my baton, you symphonic greater snow! No, no, never! Uh, search me how you want to. You'll never find it. Why not? Because I swallowed it. Ah, oh, an inside job, eh? <laughs> but it's not getting you rid of it. Here, you let me loose. What are you going to do? I will lead my orchestra by bathing you in the air. Let us go. Play it now. <laughs> Pictures of him? Only some next rays eh? Okay. Send them over. Fine. What makes him think the invisible man's at large? He says a lot of queer things have been happened around town. Someone applauded in an empty theater last night. Oh. Must have been the wind. It's funny, though. The chief said he saw a pair of pants chasing a skirt up Broadway. Just a pair of pants? Gee, that's silly. Must have been a seam walking, eh? <laughs> <laughs> what, what was, was that? that? We must be hearing things. Oh, heavens. I've got the jitters. These silly stories. Ouch! Why, Mr. Allen, how dare you? How dare I what? What are you talking about? Just because I'm your secretary, it doesn't give you the right to... Look, that chair is moving. The whole tree is dancing. <laughs> Look out! Did you ever hear a dream talking? Miss Clues, call the police. Cancel my lease. Warn the whole countryside. To look out for the invisible... <laughs> All police cars beat it. The invisible man is loose. All police cars scram. The invisible man meets Inspector Allen face to face. The invisible man gets the worst to me. Hello? Yes, yes, he's in. Inspector Allen. Hello? Yes. Yes, Chief. I'm closing in on the Invisible Man. I found his diary. Some of the prettiest ghost writing I've ever seen. 
Yes, he's a gigolo at heart. Last night he tried to slip into a Turkish bath. It was ladies' night. What? Oh, now listen, Chief. Oh, I know I'm good at disguises, but I can't make up to look like Sally Rand without her fam. Well, all right. Well, Inspector, have you any plans? Yes, is that cop on guard outside? Yes, Clancy's there. She was at the door. Well, there's nobody there. Shut that door, you fool, and keep it shut. The, the invisible, invisible man. man. Stop. Don't move. Take your hand off that phone. Put that gun down, Inspector. What do you want? <laughs> Just a little chat with you, Inspector Allen. Fine. Miss Clues, you go out. No, and... she stays right here. Now listen. You found my diary. Yes, and when I get through identifying that handwriting, you'll never be able to show your face again. I want that diary back right now. Why, you stuffed shroud. You can't scare me with your empty threats. Listen to me. I haven't begun to tear this town apart yet. If I don't get my diary out... Please, Inspector Allen, give him back his diary. Oh, all right. Here it is right here. Take it, my chorus friend. Just put it down. You can't get me to fall for your tricks. Why, you transparent upstart? Are you insinuating that Inspector Allen is not to be trusted? Go on, you're as crooked as a Swiss Dewey tour. Now just put a match to that diary and let me see it burn. Okay. Here she goes. Up in smoke. Hey, be careful. You'll have this whole place on fire. Put it out, Mr. Allen. No, let it burn. I'm insured. Say, have you gone crazy? No, but you're going to jail, you vaporized thug. Mr. Invisible Man, you're trapped. Trapped. Don't make me laugh. Mr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Allen, we'd better get out. No, not yet. Don't worry, Miss Clues. I planned this whole thing carefully. There's a sprinkler system here that'll put this fire out and make this fiend visible. What a cat hate me. <laughs> quick, quick, Miss Clues, get under this umbrella. Ah, oh, there goes the sprinkler. Oh, look. Look. I'm getting out of here. You can't. We've got you. Come in, Clancy. Yes, Inspector. Arrest this nudist Indian. A naked Indian, eh? Well, I got him. He, he's no redskin, Clancy. He's the invisible man. Yeah, you outsmarted me this time. Huh? Bad idea. Wonderful, Inspector. How did you do it? Well, business is picking up. I took the red ink I had over from last year's budget and put it on the, in the sprinkling system. When the red ink covered his body, he was no longer invisible. Look at him. He ought to be ashamed of himself. Oh, boy, is my face red. <laughs> box along with all nature is turning green, and this postcard marked, kindly write plainer, the postman's eyes are bad, comes from Mr. Edward L. Hammer at Johnstown, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Mr. Hammer says, quote, I am taking a trip to Paris this summer and wish you would help me out. I don't want to starve to death over there, so please tell me how to order a decent dinner in a French cafe, unquote. I am glad to hear that you are going to Paris, Mr. Hammer. France can certainly use a tourist this summer. <laughs> to get good service in the Parisian cafe, walk in boldly and yell at the top of your voice, You see, garçon, come on, allez everything. Oué, Elmer. The waiter will see that you are an American, whereupon he will instantly disappear into the kitchen for the next three days. If you are still there when he comes out, grab him by the arm and hold him until you can give your order as follows. Clear your throat carefully and say, Garçon, donnez-moi du pomme du pain, slice it. If you like sliced pineapple, Mr. Hammer, this is it. <laughs> Follow this with des oeufs au jambon, un café au lait, un glace frambois. <laughs> the waiter will say, qui voulez-vous manger, and leave to bring you an interpreter. And then you can order what you want in English. You can order it, but you won't get it. I hope you have a pleasant trip, Mr. Hammer, and don't forget your voulez-vous. There's no boule like an old boule. Oh, <laughs> Mr. Hammer. If you do have an international problem threatening your peace of mind, why not send it to me on a postcard? And I shall be happy to make you the talk of your town, even as I have assured Mr. Hammer of being the talk of Paris this summer. This is Fred Allen saying good, spelled Hypana, nice, spelled Sal Hepana. And don't forget, next Wednesday night, the Hour of Smiles brings you comedy. <laughs> Drama. Who's there? Please let us in. Oh, 
Ladies and gentlemen, all you need, girls, is a photograph of yourself smiling. No work to do, no money to be spent. The contest closes April 30th, so don't delay. Enter it tonight. Pick out a photograph of yourself, any kind of photograph. Write your name and address on the back and mail it to IPANA. I-P-A-N-A, care of the station to which you are now listening. And if you don't clearly understand all the conditions of the contest, write to IPANA, care of the same station, and we'll be happy to send you full details. Good night until next Wednesday when Fred Allen and his company of stars, Lenny Hayton and his Ipana troubadours, Theodore Webb, our distinguished singing troubadour, and a noted guest artist will return to the air with another hour of smiling. Good night and keep smiling. Among the musical selections heard this evening on this program was included your devastating from Roberta. This is the National Broadcasting Company. Thank you.